Howdy doody buckaroonies, and welcome back to another episode of The OTT Show, brought to you in part by Soundgadizer. Today, I wanted to talk about writer's block, because writer's block sucks, and in my line of work, doing things like videos for YouTube, media composition, making music, and sample packs, and all that kind of stuff, writer's block for me is the difference between eating and not eating, so I really don't have time to sit there f***ing about not having any idea what to do. In this video, I wanted to share with you one of my favorite sort of cures for writer's block based on, as much as I hate to say it, a sort of way of hacking your brain and using the fundamental nature of the creative process to create something from nothing. With that, I know that the format and content on this channel has sort of pivoted a little bit, but this is the stuff I am extremely interested in and passionate about, and I appreciate you indulging me in these sort of topics, because it seems like these videos have done all right lately. So with that, a big thank you to my patrons as well for making videos like this feasible. With that, as usual with these types of videos, I would love for you to consider this as a homework assignment for yourself to go out and try, and if you're struggling a bit with writer's block or creative block, give this a shot, because I really find that it helps a lot. Today's video is brought to you in part by Hologram Electronics, makers of The Microcosm. This pedal has been so insanely highly requested to be featured on this channel, so I got in touch with them and they sent me one. I was not paid for this video, but they did send me the pedal so that I can make some videos about it and share it with all of you. If you want to check out The Microcosm for yourself or any of the other pedals made by Hologram Electronics close by in Knoxville, Tennessee, so shop local, y'all, you can do that with the links down in the description below. A big thank you to Hologram Electronics for sending over the microcosm here and making this video possible. Our brains are absolutely desperate to make sense of things at all times, and one of the ways we do this is through pattern recognition, and you're pretty good at it. In fact, your brain is so good at recognizing patterns, it consistently outperforms even the top computer programs and algorithms designed to recognize patterns, which is saying a lot for that wonderfully gray, gooey lump located just a few feet above your hole. Your brain structures information in a hierarchy, which is a lot like the way a computer works. Documents go in the documents folder, videos go in the videos folder, and photos go in the photos folder. But within each of these folders, there exist various subfolders. Things like pictures from your trip to London, or those sweet Insta snaps of dinner last Friday, or pictures from your last birthday where Michelle got too drunk and threw up in the neighbor's mailbox, among various other very important things. The way that we process information is most often based on discrete segments. So take, for instance, something like the alphabet. It's really easy to recite that from start to finish. But if you have to start from a random letter, it maybe takes your brain a minute to catch up before you can go forward. However, if you have to recite it backwards from a random letter, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So by now, a lot of you might be wondering, what the f*** does this have to do with making music? I would argue that this same nature of pattern recognition and your brain's way of applying meaning to abstract information, especially when presented with it for the first time, can be leveraged in the creative process to overcome things like writer's block or creative block. This whole creative brain hack is really based on something like the Rorschach test, which in psychology is a type of projective test, where you're asked to look at an innately ambiguous and meaningless blob and make sense of it. Your brain looks at something that really means and represents nothing, but absolutely abstracts some kind of meaning from it based on the subjective discrete processes and information which make up the context. As a quick example of this, have a gander at this symbol. On its own, it really means nothing, it's just a bunch of blocks and lines. But if we set this between two letters, it's now argued that this represents the letter B. If we swap the letters out for numbers, though, suddenly your brain argues that this now represents the number 13. The symbol hasn't changed at all, but your brain is trying to apply meaning and nature to this through context. This is the same thing that makes abstract art so interesting and sometimes challenging, because you have to infer your own meaning from it based on a feeling or a mood or vague figures you may be able to make out. It's a lot like staring at clouds and making shapes out of what is really nothing. At its core, what we're really playing with here is the idea of top-down versus bottom-up processing, and this in psychology refers to the two key ways that your brain tries to make sense of something when presented with information. If you're looking at me, you can see that I have eyes, and a mouth, and a nose, and ears, and a giant bowling ball of a head. Therefore, you're looking at a face, and that face belongs to a person, and that person is me. This is top-down processing, where we're taking a broad set of points and distilling it down into a conclusion. In bottom-up processing, though, 
which is what makes abstract art and stuff like that so interesting, your brain is attempting to assemble these fundamental points and build them up to conclude a whole, if one can even be perceived. From a more philosophical standpoint here, what we're really utilizing in this exercise is the fundamental nature of the creative process and our own drive to actualize our own sense of musical idealism, which in and of itself is entirely subjective to you and your own artistic inclinations and tastes. And this is definitely a whole other rabbit hole and maybe something I'd like to explore in a future video, but it's definitely a rant for another time. So boiling all this down into simpler terms, most of the time when it comes to writer's block or creative block, you're probably just overthinking things, and the answer can be right in front of you if you let it. Okay, so this thing is the hologram of microcosm, and the microcosm, I guess, is best described as a multi-effects pedal, focusing mainly on time-based effects with things like granular delays, pitch shifters, reverb, and other glitchy, buffer mangly weirdness, kind of making it the ideal abstract texture generator, which is why it's perfect for what we're going to be doing here today. One of the most interesting features of the microcosm, I think, is the phrase looper. And a quick shout out to my friend Chris from Signs of Life for pointing this out to me, which really sparked the whole idea for this video. With the phrase looper, the microcosm can record up to 60 seconds of audio into the looper, and you can overdub and layer on top of that really to your heart's content. And with the effects routing, you can even record the affected signal into the looper, and then by going in and swapping the routing to be pre-effects, you can then run your loop through one sort of global effect. It's actually pretty nuts. So what we're gonna do here is throw down an idea, and any idea will do. We don't really need to worry about timing or anything like that, because as long as what we're doing is in key, we're all set. Even if it's just a tiny fragment of an idea you came up with, that'll work, because the idea here is we're gonna take an idea and absolutely destroy it. And for the sake of keeping things pure and simple, I'm just gonna run a quick sine wave patch out of Vital into the microcosm. So. Let's get the phrase looper ready, turn up one of the effects, maybe we'll run with the mosaic here, and give this a go. Sick. Let's maybe swap over to one of the other effects here. Maybe we'll play with one of the... Actually, let's go with the sequence. Maybe this one. And throw in an overdub. back to Mosaic here and throw in just one more layer of some kind. So I think now what we're gonna do is reverse the whole loop. I'm gonna swap the phrase looper effects routing so we can feed that into a global effect. And then we're gonna slow this whole thing down. Play back at half speed, which will bring it down an octave. Maybe we'll increase the reverb size to something more drastic. Filter this whole thing down a bit and let's run it through the effects. And now we've really got something sort of interesting happening here. So let's record that into our DAW and use this 
as our sort of starting point. With that done, we now have one long blob of amorphous, drony, reverby stuff. And if we play it back, the funny thing is, eventually your brain is going to start kicking in little ideas of things it associates with this, or maybe ideas that fit on top of this. So to me, I don't know, it almost sounds like a vocal. So from here, maybe you start to hear something like a vocal melody or a string part or a pulse, a drum rhythm, a bass pluck or something along those lines to fill in the gaps and make sense of what is nothing. I grabbed my Volitions library here and threw on just sort of a loose sort of flowing string line that seemed to complement the underlying movements and kind of ebb and flow of this texture. Building off that, I found a patch here in Generate that has sort of a cool contrast. It, it seems to fit in with the sort of I don't know, almost pulsating nature of this pad thing we've made. So throwing that together with those strings, I've now got this. So I think I'm getting somewhere. So I'm going to noodle with this a little bit more. Okay, because I was hearing some rhythm and stuff there, I brought in the sequence patch I made in Vital. Which had a really cool groove to it. I threw that through some distortion and decided to bring in just sort of a basic kind of abstract drum groove that I threw some delay on. And throwing all that together, I think we're starting to get in business. I'm starting to like this idea. So I think I'm going to give myself another maybe 20 or 30 minutes here to start developing this. Okay, after lunch and after a bit of a think, we're back. And I think I'm happy with this. It went in a completely different direction than what I would have thought, but I kept just hearing all these like rhythms and like kind of extra things going on. So it went from this sort of abstract, sad, electronic, scory, dark thing into glitch hop, I guess. So let's take a listen to the final result. That's where I ended up. I don't know where this came from exactly, but I feel like we've almost got two tracks out of this now, which for something created from maybe 20-ish some seconds of random looped material is not bad. And I think really goes to illustrate how powerful this idea is. Is this totally finished? No, definitely not. But for 45-ish minutes worth of work, I guess, it's really not that bad of a result. And it's something that's very unique 
to me because I'm not trying to make something based on something that I'm inspired by, whether that's an artist or an album or whatever. I'm purely listening to my own subjective internal radio and tastes to develop and form an idea out of just a pure abstract blob of reverby nothingness. I find that this approach is really helpful for me whenever I'm stuck with a bit of writer's block or creative block because it minimizes the all too common occurrence of self-censorship, which is what kills an idea before it even gets off the ground. And I think that's because there's just so much creative freedom here to throw everything at the wall and simply see what sticks because there is no broader frame of reference. It's all just based on what you feel like should happen next or what you feel like things should sound like. So if you're stuck with a bit of creative block or maybe just looking for sort of a creative challenge, give this a shot for yourself and see what you think. I think it's a pretty cool idea and it can be a lot of fun to explore. With that, a big thank you to Hologram Electronics for sending over the Microcosm, which is in short, pretty badass. And it's a whole lot of fun and it's something I feel like I'm gonna be using way too much, but maybe that's the mark of a good piece of gear in the end. And of course, with that, a big thank you to you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something, and as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.